tonight. Stay off the roads if you can. That's the message from the mayor of St. John's as winter storm warnings continue for eastern and northern parts of the island. Well, uh, Jeremy Eaton here. I'm just in the uh, the front seat of a pickup truck cleaning up a little bit of a parking lot. Uh, we're going to chat with the driver of this track, truck and uh, see what else people are up to today. All that's coming up in a bit. A stormy day in Central, a stormy day in Central, and as you can see, a very, very blustery night. I'm Troy Turner, live in Gander. The participants will gather right here at Marble Mountain. Then they'll zigzag up the hill, connect with the trails in Steadybrook and on to Pasadena. We're, we're really excited to work with Easter Seals this weekend. A cross-country fundraiser returns to the West Coast this weekend after a 10-year hiatus. This is CBC Here and Now. Good evening and welcome to Here and Now. It's a multi-day winter storm and it's not over yet. Schools and businesses on the Avalon and in Central are shut down today with drivers being warned to stay off the roads until the storm is over. And it has been a busy day for meteorologist Ashley Brawweiler, who's outside of our studio right now. So Ash, I just have one question for you. Do you want to build a snowman? <laughs> yes, I do. Uh, the snow out here, Carolyn, is perfect snowman snow. Not so much for clearing. Uh, this is what we would call cement snow out there. Uh, we did see a bit of a break this afternoon, which, uh, you know, with some rain in the mix, even some ice pellets in some cases, so uh, leading to even heavier snow to clean. Uh, but there is a lot more on the way. If we take a look at some of the numbers, or I'll tell you a little bit of the numbers that uh, have been reported. So St. John's Airport, 17 centimeters, but various areas around the metro have seen significantly more than that. 28.3 centimeters recorded St. John's East. Kilbride picked up uh, about 31 centimeters in Paradise, about 26. So. As you head towards Gander, though, uh, the amounts are just starting to ramp up now. Uh, those uh, snowfall totals so far around 13.5 centimeters. But like I said, we did see a bit of a break. Things starting to ramp up again tonight and expecting this to continue as we head through tonight and into tomorrow for parts of Central and even into Saturday. Uh, for parts of Labrador. So definitely that multi-day storm, uh, you know, living up to uh, the expectation uh, for from the last couple of days. So for those of you that were, you know, curled up and cozy inside today was a little bit of a break, but essential workers uh, like snowplow operators, uh, it's been a busy day. I know I've been hearing that uh, beeping sound all day and uh, Blair Keating is one of those people and Jeremy Eaton has been riding shotgun this evening. So Jeremy, what's going on up there? Well, actually, I don't know if you saw us. We just drove past you. I'm uh, here with, uh, this is the front. Let me flip it around here. I'm just here in the cab with uh, Blair Keating here from uh, BK Services. One of the uh, many contractors out on the roads today uh, clearing out uh, all the snow. But like you said, a lot of businesses were shut down today, but we did find some that were open, including one flower shop. Now, as we've talked about last night, and we'll talk about more today, there was a lot of these these Valentine's Day snowstorms aren't a good thing, but for the folks there at Holland Nurseries, they're taking it all in stride. Take a look at a uh, little bit of a listen with my chat earlier today with uh, Holland Nurseries owner John Frecker. It's uh, Valentine's Day and we've hit with another snowstorm. What sort of impact does that have here at Holland Nurseries, John? It's always disruptive. Uh, we're getting used to it. <laughs> Uh, learn, learn from experience. Uh, what we tried to do this year, as in the same last year, got most of our deliveries out yesterday, which was uh, critical, but there's some orders came in yesterday that we couldn't get ready in time to get out, so we're trying to get them out today. Um, and we're open for walk-in if somebody comes in. But uh, I don't expect many because it's not particularly pleasant. Out. <laughs> Have you seen anybody walk in so far? Uh, we had a few came in. If, uh, some were pe people who had arranged to pick up today. Other people were just getting something out of the cooler. And uh, the staff have come in to, or not all of the staff, but some have come in to make sure that we can keep uh, the wheels rolling. <laughs> How big of a deal is Valentine's Day to the business? It's big. It's not as big as it used to be, interestingly. Mother's Day is the giant day for, uh, maybe people care more for their mothers than their girlfriends, I don't know. This is, um, but the uh, it is a big day, and the challenge is it's all very compressed. Mother's Day spreads over three days because it's a weekend. 
that Valentine's Day people want them out, they want them out on the 14th, and if possible they want them out in the morning at the office, <laughs> and that's the real challenge. We appreciate Valentine's and we hope that the people who get the flowers appreciate what we're doing to make it a festive day. So we're just uh, doing laps. You can see all the CBC vehicles. This is the back of our parking lot. Uh, Blair Keating is uh, cleaning it up for us as uh, we chat to you from my phone. So if it looks a bit wonky, that's why. Now, uh, the mayor was on uh, CBC News Network earlier today chatting about the storm and uh, some advice for people. So uh, just take a listen to what our fair mayor had to say earlier today. If you don't have to go out, uh, if it's not an emergency, then uh, then, then don't go out. Uh, if uh, uh, you know, keep make sure that you respect the uh, the parking ban that's in, in force now, and uh, keeping your cars uh, off the road and uh, in uh, in your in your parking spaces. And you can find them on our website uh, where the parking bans are. Also, look out for your neighbors. If you have neighbors that you know uh, and might need some assistance, just make sure that they're doing well. And, uh, you know, we've talked about earlier about the impact this has on the restaurants. Uh, you know, so uh, if you were planning to go out to dinner this evening, then reschedule and uh, and help out the, uh, the restaurants that for the third year in a row are facing a snowstorm on Valentine's Day. It's a, it's a big day for them. And uh, hopefully that uh, you can re rework your plans and uh, and and move your dinner to another date. So uh, that was Mayor Danny Breen speaking earlier today on CBC News Network, and obviously we talked a lot yesterday about those restaurants being shut down. Now we're just in the parking lot. Uh, pull down now. Uh, I'm just going to flip the camera around. Uh, Blair, uh, your buddy up there. Uh, what's his name? He he said he wanted to be on. He wanted to make sure he was on the news. Jerry. <laughs> So uh, there we go, flipping around there. Uh, Jerry, uh, hope your mom, dad are watching or somebody's watching. There's Jerry up there in the front. Blair, uh, you, you and I have been chatting for a little bit here in the cab there. What time have you, what time did you get up this morning? Uh, we started, uh, started probably around six-ish. I think it started to snow around maybe five. So we were, we were on the go a little bit after that. So on a snowstorm day like this, uh, how late will you work? How late will you and Jerry be out tonight? Uh, we'll be... Uh, We'll be out probably till around uh, nine or nine thirty because uh, we got some condominiums that uh, that need to be uh, kept open in case uh, you know of an emergency or something like that. A first responder got to get in, so we'll be uh, we'll be on the go for for quite a while yet. You uh, you're here at the CBC a lot. Just want to say thanks. We appreciate what you do. But uh, how many other businesses or uh, uh, parking lots and places will you clear in the run of a day on a snowstorm like this, Blair? So we got uh, we got ten commercial lots. We don't do any residential. Uh, we're strictly commercial only. Um, ten commercial lots, uh, mostly in the East End, Elizabeth Avenue area, Bonaventure Avenue, uh, Spanger Drive, Torbay Road. It's probably the most of it. I, uh, I've been out here. It's a lot of fun out here for a couple of minutes, but when you're out here for 12, 14, 16 hours a day, does it get a little bit tiring, a little bit uh, boring? A little bit, a little bit monotonous, yeah. So what do you do to pass the time then? Uh, <laughs> listen to CBC radio. <laughs> oh God, you're too good, you're too good. Now I know that, um, how many trucks? I know that you have this truck and we saw your other, what's, first of all, what's that orange thing called? Uh, what, would you, what would you call that? That's a loader. So loader, so how many, how many vehicles would you have in your little fleet of BK services? So we got, we got two loaders and two trucks. And um, so basically this on a snowstorm, what I got to ask, I know that it hasn't been a great snowstorm, but you and I were chatting about this earlier. I know it hasn't been a lot of snow, but from your perspective, what have you seen? Heavy snow, lots of ice, or what, what's it like from your side this winter, Blair? Uh, it's been a little bit of an uncharacteristic winter in regards of uh, freezing rain and stuff. It seems like we've got a lot more freezing rain in January, February than we've had in previous years. We've... Uh, We've gone through a lot of uh, salt this year. We're probably going to be triple um, our salt budget this year. So, yeah, that one hurts. <laughs> <laughs> I, can, I can see that hurts. Blair, I greatly appreciate uh, your time and letting me into the cab and, uh, and letting me watch you uh, do your work here. I uh, appreciate your time. Thanks so much for that. No, no problem. Thank you. All right. Obviously, that's uh, Blair Keating, BK Services. He's cleaning this lot plus many, many more. And while it looks like a lot of fun, it, it actually is a lot of fun. So maybe next time, uh, maybe he'll let me drive the loader. But we <laughs> no, highly doubt that. Anyways, uh, reporting live uh, from the front seat of the uh, Blair, Blair's truck here in the CBC parking lot, I'm Jeremy Eaton. All right. Well, a fishing boat is stranded just outside Fortune on the island's south coast. Crews have been weathering the storm all day, working to free the vessel. Here in us, Peter Cowan has the latest from our newsroom. 
The Cape Cordell was heading into the Port of Fortune earlier this morning with the hold filled with redfish when something went wrong. It ended up on the beach just outside the entrance to the harbour. Around 7 a.m., the first fisherman arrived on site to try and help pull it out. Paul Wells says he was able to get a line to the crew, but his 40-foot fishing boat wasn't powerful enough. We put a rope aboard and we uh, tried to tow it off a few times until my rope busts. But my boat don't have enough power to uh, retrieve it from the, from the beach. Another larger boat tried without success, and then this afternoon a Coast Guard lifeboat arrived to try and help. Despite 3,000 horsepower, the Barrington Bay didn't have any more success in dangerous conditions. It's not helping that it's a heavy steel boat with tens of thousands of pounds of redfish on board, and the tide was falling all afternoon. The Coast Guard says it's now a waiting game for conditions to improve. The weather conditions not expected to improve significantly and, um, and the added factor of darkness tonight will make it a very difficult um, operation that uh, we don't uh, really believe would be successful because of the uh, size and, and how far up on the shore that vessel is right now. So, uh, you know, unfortunately, we, we kind of kind of had to wait for uh, weather conditions to improve before we could attempt something like that. The good news is the four crew members on board are safe. There's no reports of water getting into the boat, and there are plans in place in case they need to be rescued. But the bad news is the weather isn't helping. The strong winds are expecting to continue throughout tomorrow. Peter Cowan, CBC News, St. John's. Well, staying with the storm, people in Central have been dealing with the weather all day as well. Here now is Troy Turner joins us live from Gander. So, Troy, how's it looking out there now? Oh, thanks, Caroline. As you can see, it's very, very nasty out there. Not the nicest of day. When people were getting up this morning, that's around when the snow started to fall. As the day got uh, progressed, the snow got progressively worse and worse. The wind started to pick up late morning, and then the heavy snowfall followed that, and it's been getting really just worse ever since. I spent most of the day going around town, and I chatted with people who were trying to keep on top of it. Visibility all but vanished on the TCH in Gander today, and around town this afternoon, it was pretty much the same. The snow began to accumulate around lunchtime, and residents worked hard to keep on top of it. Well, I'm already sweating. It's really struggle today. The one thing is, at least it's not the dumb snow. It's pretty fluffy, so that way I can kind of lift it a little bit better. But I'm tired. I've been only for five minutes and I'm already tired. Yana Sloat moved to the province from Ontario a year ago. She doesn't mind the winter, but the shoveling is hard. It's a little bit challenge for me every time it's snowing, um, just because we don't have a, a nice uh, snow plowing machine. Uh, we only have this guy here. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a still challenge for me. And every time I go, I'm just uh, pray for the best. Residents cleared their driveways and plows took care of the streets and parking lots. Schools closed before the worst of the weather began. Build this driveway probably once or twice a day, the full length of it. And I'll probably go over and do my senior citizen's place over there across the street, do his front step or something. Dennis Mills has a snowblower sitting in his shed, but he prefers to shovel. We got two Shih Tzu dogs, and I got tra trails made. Uh, in the backyard there and uh, a few other neighbors come along with the dogs on a nice day. So they got chairs made out there in the back to sit around, have a coffee and let dogs run around. While he often gets help with the heavy stuff at the end of his driveway, he and his collection of seven shovels handle the rest. Just take your time. You know, don't rush, rush around, do everything. I want to try to get all I want. Done at once. People look at, look at me and laugh, laugh at me when they're walking up the road. But uh, I don't know, I, don't, I just don't mind. Oh if, we, oh, if we all loved winter and shoveling as much as Dennis Mills does. I'm Troy Turner, reporting live from Gander. Thanks, Troy. Well, it was a tough day and a long one for everyone digging out on the Avalon. Here's how it started. 
It's very windy and the snow is coming down pretty heavy, but it's still a decent temperature, so as long as you're dressed for it, it should be fine. Hi, my name is Chris Hodnut. And what's happening this morning? Uh, just out walking my dog and in the weather. <laughs> Why did you come out even though it's so nasty out? Uh, because I have a husky, so I uh, really don't have a choice. And I don't think the weather matters to him. <laughs> I've seen probably another four or five uh, dog walkers and then like small amount of people uh, doing their morning commute. But that's pretty much it. It's pretty quiet other than that. Any Valentine's Day plans? Uh, no. Not, no Valentine's Day plans for me. I'd say uh, me and my dog will probably just hang out at home and enjoy the, uh, enjoy the warm house after a long, cold walk. Um, my name is Francine. I'm the owner of a big husky that loves to go for a walk in this weather. So that's why I'm shoveling at this time in the, in the day. Yeah, tell me what you're doing right now. I'm shoveling the sidewalk from my door to the road. So all the dogs in this neighborhood can easily walk. My neighbor has a really small dog, so needs to have no snow on the ground. That's nice. Do you always do that? I do. I do. It's a hobby. <laughs> and describe what it's like out this morning. A blizzard <laughs> But the snow is heavy enough that even with the wind, I hope it won't all come back. So, so that's why I'm doing the first cut, because, you know, 60 centimeters is almost my height. <laughs> what would you say to people who are going out and about this morning? What's your advice for them? Stay home. The city is out with the plows and everything, but the snow is on the ground and it's slippery underfoot. And stay home, open a bottle of wine, eat some chips, you know. <laughs> Well, some good advice. Well, in other news, an 87-year-old man was killed after he was struck by a loader clearing snow in a port basque parking lot. It happened yesterday at around 3.30 in the afternoon on Gilbert Place. That's where the town's hospital is. Police say the man was walking across the parking lot when he was hit by the loader. He died at the scene. The RCMP say it is investigating. Well, now to the Avalon, a man is in custody after police searched a home in Clark's Beach and discovered 17 firearms, including an AR-15 assault rifle. As part of an ongoing investigation, Bay Roberts police searched the home yesterday. Ottawa banned the assault-style firearm in the wake of the deadly Nova Scotia shooting in 2020. Among the firearms seized, a loaded handgun and a shotgun with additional ammunition. Police say the weapons and ammunition were not properly stored. The man faces a number of firearms related charges. Well, a petition calling for a longer recreational food fishery in Newfoundland and Labrador has collected more than 2,200 signatures, but there is opposition to it as well. The FFAW says the Federal Fisheries Department needs to improve monitoring and enforcement before it expands the food fishery. Here in Asmar Quint reports. Tour operator Graham Wood has been calling for changes to the food fishery for about a decade. In January, he started this petition, and he hopes it will attract at least 5,000 signatures. Speak up and be heard, and hopefully uh, we'll, uh, we'll get the federal minister to decide on uh, uh, giving us back some freedom uh, to be able to retain some fish in our waters. Last year, there were 39 recreational food fishery days. The petition is calling for that to more than double by allowing five fish a day every day from July 1st to October 1st. We're not trying to destroy the stock. All we want is that people be able to get their fish uh, and, and retain amount of fish for their families. The petition asked that licensed tour operators be allowed to keep two fish per tourist per day. It also says season dates should be announced by May 1st, so tour operators, tourists and residents have time to plan their summers. What's going on right now is just a free-for-all. FFAW leaders won't be signing the petition. They fear many people are breaking the rules by keeping big fish and throwing back the small ones and taking more than their five fish per day limit. The union's president says the Federal Fisheries Department needs to get the recreational fishery under control before it even thinks about expanding it. You can't have a non-regulated fishery and, and call it something else. But we know that uh, 
what's going on out there. Everybody knows what's going on, but yet nobody wants to do anything about it. So what we're saying to DFO is start monitoring, start tracking those removals, and we can have a better system than we have now. The opportunity to sign the petition closes at the end of this month. Federal Conservative MP Clifford Small is expected to present it in Ottawa at the House of Commons. Mark Quinn, CBC News, St. John's. Well, on the West Coast, the town of Pasadena may expand to incorporate the community of Little Rapids. It means the boundaries of Pasadena would grow and so would its tax base. The move would also give residents of Little Rapids access to Pasadena's services. The mayor says they're still analyzing the costs and benefits of amalgamation and has asked the province to assign a third party to study the possibilities. Storm or no storm, winter can be a dangerous time for pedestrians. The city of St. John says it's bringing in more crews to help clear sidewalks, but many walkers are still coming up against obstacles on their morning commute. The CBC's Daryl Roberts has that story. Winter in St. John's. It can be treacherous, an obstacle course of snow and icy patches. It's only three blocks, but, um, you know, we're basically dodging snow banks these days. Every day, Luke Quinton's family walk to elementary school. It's around 8.30 in the morning, rush hour. About halfway along the route, they need to avoid this. This is the block that I guess gets us every time. Um, you know, of course, my kid is quite happy to climb over the humongous snow pile, but um, as a parent, you know, this is definitely not what you want to see. Uh, and it's growing this year, so, you know, it, I mean, she climbs over it these days, but, um, I mean, it, you know, lots of families walk this way, and you're forced out into traffic every day, so that's, uh, it could be better. According to the City of St. John's Collision Report, 354 pedestrians were hit by vehicles between 2018 and 2022. In 86% of those collisions, someone was hurt or killed. But the city is working on improving sidewalk snow clearing. We added a third overnight shift. Prior to that, we just basically cleared sidewalks during the day. But now it's essentially 24 hours a day, the same as the streets would be done. Um, we bought new equipment, we've hired new staff, uh, and that's allowed us to increase from the 161 kilometers to now 175 kilometers and go from seven days to five days to have all sidewalks completed. This pedestrian advocate agrees there have been improvements. I've been walking around quite a bit, and uh, a lot of sidewalks are cleared fairly promptly. They could be done even more promptly because people who walk need to get around, and even people who take the bus need to get around as early as people who drive to get to work, to get to school, and so on. But nevertheless, I think they're doing more sidewalks and doing them better. But Yeoman believes the city can do more to make active transportation easier, and she wants the provincial government to get involved too. We've just recently had the Provincial Health Accord and found that we have the worst health in the country, in this province. Um, it's well known from a lot of research that being able to get around actively is significantly correlated with people's health. It's also correlated with um, economic benefit and very substantial savings, but it would be mostly the province that would get the benefit because it's mostly related to health. Corab says the city will take any money it can get for sidewalk clearing, but for now, it's working within the resources it has. One thing's for sure, St. John's winters aren't about to get any less messy and challenges with sidewalk clearing will continue. Daryl Roberts, CBC News, St. John's. One well, icon of broadcasting in Newfoundland and Labrador has died. Vince Gallant spent more than 60 years as a journalist and broadcaster. After working in PEI Halifax in Montreal, he joined VOCM in the early 1980s and retired in 2019. Gallant was 88. Well, weather has forced Gonzaga High School to reschedule its annual Ocean Ranger Memorial service. The memorial had been set for tomorrow at the Basilica in St. John's. Now, this is footage of last year's memorial service from February 16th. It was delayed by the weather then, too. And this year, the stormy weather will likely continue through tomorrow, so the memorial is now happening on Monday. Now, this will mark 42 years since the Ocean Ranger sank during a fierce storm killing all 84 crew on board. The oil rig capsized off the Grand Banks, becoming one of the deadliest offshore accidents in history. 
Here at the Marine Institute, there's such a deep connection here to the Ocean Ranger disaster. Where do we want to display or exhibit uh, such artifacts for the benefit of the province? Forever changed by tragedy. Right now, relics from the Ocean Ranger are being stored in Ottawa. Tomorrow on Here and Now, the Marine Institute says it's time to bring them home. Ashley, back indoors after being out in that blustery weather. We've been talking a lot about the snow and a bit of that rain that came down, but uh, it was really windy today, too. It was very windy, especially for southern areas of the province uh, this morning. Let's take a look at some of the numbers out there. 145 kilometers per hour. That was the wind gust uh, recorded in Cape Pine today. Uh, Green Island uh, recorded same, and then really most areas seeing those winds uh, gusting or a lot of areas I should say seeing winds gusting over 100 kilometers per hour. Uh, St. John's so far today topped out at about 80 kilometers per hour and if we take a look at where we're sitting now wind wise uh, we're actually seeing those winds much higher in Bonavista at the moment 81 kilometer per hour sustained winds 
50 in St. John's, Twillingate seeing 63, but you uh, factor in those wind gusts, uh, 87 is what uh, the wind gust is in Twillingate and Bonavista now 102. So you've uh, seen an increase in those winds. Cape Race now uh, seeing a wind gust around 100 kilometers per hour. So that's where most of the wind is at the moment, thanks to where that area of low pressure is located. Uh, it's leading to a very uh, chilly wind chill out there. Bonavista feels more like minus 10. So certainly not a nice night out there. Uh, Gander at minus 11 saw Troy out there in the middle of that uh, as well a little earlier. So there's that area of low pressure offshore. It is a strong area of low pressure. Uh, we saw some ice pellets in the mix today. We saw some rain in the mix today, which is exactly what I was afraid was going to happen yesterday and kept talking about that rain snow line, that all important rain snow line. So for now it's offshore, but we are seeing some of that heavier snow bands move back in how long they hang around right along the coast. We'll Tell us how much snow we're going to see. A little bit of a, a change in the intensity on the radar anyway through Gander, but you're definitely still seeing snow, and we're seeing that snow all the way back through to Cornerbrook. Not uh, overly impressive as far as snowfall is concerned. The further west you go, most of that is falling in eastern areas of the island. So if I just uh, show you the intensity at the moment and where that rain snow line is, where we're seeing some ice pellets is particularly down at southeastern uh, portions of the Avalon. That's where it should stay for the night tonight. Uh, if we take a look at the future tracker, also showing those winds staying up through most of the night tonight. So conditions will again deteriorate. They've been varied across uh, eastern Newfoundland all day today. Like I said a little bit earlier, 31 centimeters, I think, has been recorded in some areas. Um, but uh, you still have lots more to go uh, through central as you see this snow continue through tonight and into tomorrow as well. So our uh, temperatures tonight will hover around the zero degree mark, maybe a little bit below through central, definitely towards the west coast and up across Labrador as well. Uh, Lab City will hover around minus 21 tonight, uh, but we do have some of that milder air towards the coast, and you're also seeing that snow and gusty winds tonight as well. So uh, northwesterlies will be gusting anywhere from 50 to 70 kilometers per hour. Now, uh, the other thing to note with this system is the storm surge. There is a storm surge warning in place from essentially Cape Spear through to Deadman's Bay. Uh, the potential for some coastal flooding is certainly there, especially around high tide, uh, which is 11 p.m. to 1 a.m. Uh, in the morning. The, earlier today, even not even as high as this high tide, we did see uh, some reports of a little bit of coastal flooding, minor coastal flooding around Brigus. So uh, definitely be prepared for that tonight. So as we head into tomorrow, like I said, that snow will generally continue. Rates across the Avalon will taper to more like a light snow, but we're still going to see those gusty winds. However, areas uh, from essentially Gander, uh, Bonavista North, even the Bay of Exploits, uh, you're going to see that snow, which will be heavy at times, continue through tomorrow. And winds will be very gusty, 80, 90 kilometers per hour, certainly not out of the question. And we're going to see that snow up across portions of Labrador as well. Now, as far as snowfall totals are concerned, still looking at 40 to 60 centimeters in total for some areas, uh, but it looks like you'll pick up another maybe 20 to 30 by the time that is all said and done uh, in that area. Uh, along the coast. Let's just uh, take a quick look at the forecast for tomorrow. Your temperatures will be hovering above zero or around zero for most as you head towards the west a little cooler. And Labrador, you're looking at your temperatures in the minus single digits for the most part. We'll get into the long range forecast when I come back. Thanks, Ashley. Well, the Snowarama fundraiser has returned to the West Coast after a 10 year hiatus. The snowmobile ride raises money for Easter seals. Here now's Colleen Connors has more from Marble Mountain. This is where it starts with dozens of people revving their machines at the base of Marble Mountain, ready to head out on a charity rip. It's just going to be an awesome event full of community, snowmobiling, of course, and uh, a good way for people to learn about Easter Seals. It's a pledged snowmobile ride, with all money raised going to the free equipment loan program for people with disabilities. It allows people to get outside, um, but also uh, allows uh, for the support of folks who might need a walker or a cane or um, equipment like that as well. Uh, so the $15,000 will go to 
uh, our equipment loan program, specifically the construction of a large outbuilding, which will become the home base of our equipment loan program. Anyone with a sled can donate money and head out for a Sunday ride as part of the Canada-wide Easter Seals fundraiser. The Western Snow Riders Snowmobile Club will guide the group of riders on the Snowarama, a network of over 80 kilometres of trails. The participants will gather right here at Marble Mountain. Then they'll zigzag up the hill, connect with the trails in Steadybrook and on to Pasadena to see some of the most beautiful scenes on the province's west coast. Uh, we're going to stop at our, one of our warm-up shelters and have a few snacks and then we're going to try, weather permitting, to get the group down to North Harbour Road and into the lake so they can have a look at Grand Lake, uh, which is a view that most of this, this group probably hasn't seen before. Then the Western Snow Riders will bring the group back to Marble for a lunch and prizes. And so we've really reached out and a lot of groups have reached out to us and they want to work with us on events and stuff. So we're, we're really excited about working with Easter Seals this weekend. Green and Douglas hope to see 40, even 50 snowmobiles on Sunday. We are a nonprofit, as you know, um, and so uh, not only to raise funds, but also to make the connections, um, making connections, building that sense of community um, is very important for Easter Seals. And we definitely want to work, continue to work to uh, break down those barriers for people with disabilities. Colleen Connors, CBC News, Marble Mountain.
The seniors at Alderwood Estates in Whitless Bay are giving some lessons in love and celebrating Valentine's Day with a new video. In it, the ladies teach the men a thing or two about what women want. Have a look. I can think we can turn some of these men into Casanovas. Well, we wanted to do something special for Valentine's. You know, we hadn't done a video in, in six or seven months, so we thought Valentine's would be a great time to take this on. And the genesis kind of came because we have some people at the seniors' home who found love, who, who found romantic partners at this stage in their life. And, you know, during coffee, you know, some of the women were saying, gosh, I wish I could find love for Valentine's. And then we just started t throwing out scenarios that were really funny and coming up with the, the you know, the idea that, well, if we can't, we're not, for, we're not comfortable with maybe going on a line, plenty of fish dating, and all this stuff. Maybe we can just turn the guys here into the ideal Casanovas, as we call them, with a little, with a little, you know, tutorial from these ladies. They thought they could whip them into shape. What would you want in a man? You know, say for example, you were looking for a man who wanted to take you out on Valentine's, and you had a choice. So you want a good dresser, and you don't want anyone to look like a, like we said, a streel or a skeet or whatever, and. Then the funniest part of all was you had to have protection. So, so somebody said, yeah, I got it here in my pocket. And then somebody else, you know, we showed somebody with a suit of all clothes on and a tube of the DW40 as the lubricant. When we're shooting these videos, the laughter that like, it's just like a laugh track constantly in the background, like a live audience as we're shooting them, you know, it's so funny. Oh my, we had a lot of laughs. We had a lot of, a lot of laughs, you know, things go wrong, you try to correct it and you go back and you try to correct it again. And, you know, but it was really, really, really hilarious. For them, they feel like they're relevant, they belong, and, and people are taking their work seriously, they're laughing, they're making people smile, they're giving back, and people are taking them seriously. And and, and, they're, and they're, the words that come through are so encouraging, and you see them, you know, they, they you can feel the pride. I mean, it gives them a sense of purpose, number one. But secondly, there is a sense of pride in their work when it's done. Like any of us, when we do something that you think that we're, that is good, we, we have a sense of pride. And that's still important, whether you're 80, 90, or 97. I grew up among concerts with our, we only had a parish hall, we had no microphones, we had no lights, we had no just ordinary lights, that's all we had. And so doing this is such a pleasure, you know, it takes me back. And it takes a lot of the people back, a lot of the seniors who grew up in all along the southern shore in concerts and singing and skits and, and so on. So I'll tell you, we really had a, we really enjoyed it. And then when you get the comments back and people say, oh, how you give them a great laugh or how uplifting it is for them, you know, to just sit there and watch you and, and they love it. They look forward to it. It's to them, it's like um, it's going out, you know, they're seeing us doing those things and they love it. Happy Valentine's Day to everyone, to those who watch their videos, to those who are home looking out at the storm, wishing it was fine, that they could get out and enjoy it. So to everyone, a happy and a safe Valentine's Day. Well, they sure know how to have a bit of fun out there. Well, did you know that part of Newfoundland has its very own Valentine's Day greeting? Mar Fulton is seldom heard nowadays, but it was common enough to be noted in the Newfoundland Dictionary. Just have a listen to this. Mar Fulton means essentially happy Valentine's Day. Good morrow, Valentine. They pronounce it, the second part, a whole lot of different ways. Folleton, Volaton, Fountain, Mar Fountain. It's not one of these Irish Newfoundland bits of folklore. It's a West Country English bit of folklore. And uh, so you don't find this, by the way, in the Irish parts of Newfoundland. Instead, you find it, as I said, in Bonifacio Bay and Trinity Bay and so on. The West Country accent, among other things, took Fs, made them Vs, and sometimes vice versa. So Valentine became Fault and F. Uh, and the Ls, which in Irish Newfoundland English are kind of L, milk, uh, uh, are not like that in the West Country of England. They're more dark. And milk, milk. And so Valentine was a very dark L that sometimes disappeared. Valton, Fulton. Uh, and uh, the Mar, well, that everybody knows good marnin, Mar, Mar, good marrow. Uh, Valentine became eventually Mar Fulton. So that's the phrase. T 
typically marifaltin would be used by children to adults. They'd also use it amongst themselves, but there was a kind of a forfeit involved. If you, the child, said to me first that you're the first child to say marifaltin to me, then I was beholden to you for something. And it would be a gift. I might have a gift right away in my pocket. I read stories of, say, grandparents who'd keep 50 cent pieces in their pocket to give to the child who said Marfalton first. In the 20th century, uh, there was, of course, uh, an avalanche of popular culture that largely came out of the United States. So a whole lot of things changed here as people put away the local versions and then picked up the American versions. So Mara Fulton was never mentioned in uh, TV shows or radio shows or movies, and you couldn't buy Mara Fulton cards in the stores, and teachers didn't encourage children to draw Mara Fulton greetings or anything. So it, it just sort of got forgotten. It hasn't gone away altogether, but it certainly shrunk, even in those parts of, of Trinity Bay and Valdez Bay where it was, it was thickest.
many people have hobbies that keep them busy. Some people like to garden, some paint. Well, David Murphy in Pasadena likes to build model boats. He's been building boats since the 1970s and says he's built so many he could fill a museum. The CBC's Amy Fian brings us his story. I, I've been modeling boats for uh, close to 50 years. Every time I was down by the water, I was like looking at boats. So I just got into it that way. First one I was a kit I put together, right? I said, well, if you can build them from a kit, you know what I mean? You can, all you need is a plan, right? Mm -hmm. So that's what I've done. So I've been doing it ever since. There's a lot of work. Mm -hmm. That one there took me uh, 800 hours. Wow. So that's a lot of time out in the shed, right? Yeah. Wow. Plus, I built a, a 30 footer. Yeah. 10 foot wide. So, you built like a real big version of this. Yeah. And then you did the small one? Uh, no, I had that built first. I want to see if I can build it. <laughs> <laughs> That's planked on, you know, these planks inside and they're uh, molds, and then I built it on the mold. So, you just build a big one. Okay. The only thing is, you're working with bigger equipment, right? Five years building that boat. So, after I got rid of that, I just kept sticking to a Model. I'm sort of winding down now. I have to be 83 in my birthday, so. So I, I got away from the boat a little bit and I'm doing these shadow boxes, right? It's just something different, right? Mm. I like trying to experiment with stuff. I thought it keeps me occupied. So the wife said one time she, she prayed that I would never have idle hands. I think that's the curse that was put on me. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, I enjoy doing it. I guess me out to Chesterfield. Well, a little bit earlier, you heard about little-known Valentine's Day traditions from years gone by. Well, here is another. Did you know the 14th of February wasn't always a day of flowers and love notes? It was also a day to tease the object of your affection. Card manufacturers will tell you that, oh yes, Valentine's cards go back to the 15th century. Well, sort of. But uh, really, they, that whole tradition caught on in Britain and in the United States in a big way in, at the end of the 19th century. But one of the, the most important parts of that tradition was the, the jokey and, and even more, the insulting Valentine card. Here in Newfoundland, there was a, a tradition of toasts, val, uh, Valentine or Fulton toasts. And toasts were little rhymes that people would make up. There might be one or two verses, you know, four lines each about someone and about some stupid or funny or embarrassing thing that they did and that now no one's going to forget because there's a rhyme about it. The, the usual way this happened was uh, someone would write it out and then he would leave it on the door or in the, the mail slot or give it to a, a kid sister to bring in to the, the, the recipient or whatever. So they were often like Valentine's cards except there was a rhyme. But uh, I think that toast tradition has now disappeared on Valentine's Day.
Okay, lots of uh, weather talk today, and now we're going to look ahead uh, at the long-range forecast, and we're into the weekend now, really. Yeah, and it still includes snow. <laughs> Thanks okay. to this area of low pressure, it is not going anywhere anytime <laughs> soon. Uh, let's just take a look right into your Thursday evening and into Friday. So uh, winds will continue Thursday evening, especially up across Labrador as well. In fact, this will be uh, a multi-day event for you as well. So we should eventually start to see some of that snow taper off for the northeast coast and the Avalon. However, the west coast, you are going to start to see some onshore flurries from this one. Temperatures are going to be fairly cold. And that's the story up across Labrador as well, especially towards the coast and even through to Happy Valley Goose Bay. Uh, you're looking at some pretty significant snow as we head uh, through the day on Friday, continuing into Saturday and then even into Sunday in some cases. But uh, we will eventually see some clearing out across uh, the eastern half of the island. Uh, we're looking at those temperatures staying below zero, anywhere from about minus one to minus three through the day on Friday. Up across Labrador, minus single digits as well, except towards the north coast and the west uh, where you're going to see your temperatures between minus 10 and minus 12. And again, Lab City, I know there hasn't been a whole lot of snow for you and, uh, and unfortunately you're going to sit this one out as well. So Friday evening into Saturday uh, for coastal areas of Labrador, you're still looking at that snow continuing winter storm conditions as well. And then that onshore flurry activity as well for the West Coast. We may see some uh, flurries or we will see some flurries for the Northern Peninsula and uh, potentially the Bayvert Peninsula as well. Now, as far as your temperatures are concerned, we're still going to stay uh, a couple of degrees below zero uh, for most of the island up across Labrador. Your temperature is really not moving a whole lot, but that cold air means the snow is going to be really fluffy. Uh, so it is going to accumulate quite uh, quickly. And we're looking at temperatures around minus 12 for Nain and minus 16 for Lab City. So how much snow are we talking about in Labrador? Well, uh, there is a chance we could see uh, upwards of 60 to 70 centimeters of snow. Some models are pointing it higher than that as well, but I do think it will be in the higher elevations. But around Happy Valley Goose Bay, 60 centimeters, definitely not out of the question by the time you get into Saturday. Long range forecast showing temperatures into the minus single digits right through to Monday. Flurry activity, uh, so we'll see some nice uh, conditions on Saturday. Sunday flurries will return. For central and western Newfoundland, you are looking a little bit more sunshine through central. More flurries through western portions, but temperatures will be into the minus single digits. And then up across Labrador, we are looking at those temperatures into the minus teens as we get into Saturday uh, for western Labrador and a little later, well, all through next week uh, and eastern Labrador, you'll see your temperatures into the minus teens as well again with some snowy conditions. Uh, speaking of snowy conditions, it's oh, been wow. a beautiful day on the west coast of the island. Uh, and this is a gorgeous, gorgeous shot of gross morn. Uh, Grant shared this lovely shot with us uh, and he emailed it to nlphotos at cbc.ca and that is the best place to email your photos if you have any that you would like to share with us and potentially see on the show. Yeah, show us some uh, photos of all the snow that's down. Mm -hmm. And you touched on this just then, uh, but Lab West really has not had much by way of storms lately. It seems like everything is sticking everything to the east of the island, the east. but Lab yeah. West is like sunshine all the time. It's it seems. true. Yeah, definitely need some more snow, but uh, enjoy the sunshine. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's it for us on this storm day. Thank you so much for spending part of your evening with us. Good night.